Okay, so um, yes, I was wondering if there might be some um, some folks visiting because I did make a special invitation to people who uh, are part of the wild goose community. That was uh, that was the plan for today. Uh, initially, it looked like I would not be here, and it set in motion a number of concerns like. How the heck do we run the service? <laughs> Who knows how to run the technology? And then, of course, uh, due to COVID, I, I chose that it wasn't safe to go. And so I'm not in North Carolina. I'm here, which meant that, uh, that I'm here to help run the technology. And we decided that due to COVID, we needed to go back to all Zoom. And um, I perhaps foolishly decided to go ahead and try some different uh, software <laughs> technology in order to try to make it uh, a little more compatible with Zoom. So we'll see how that that goes today. But uh, but I did put the word out to a number of folks who are uh, not who also chose not to go to North Carolina for this festival this weekend and are home and participating virtually through Facebook and whatnot. And uh, so if any of you have shown up, perhaps uh, watching the recording. Welcome, so glad to have you with us as well. So um, our announcements today are the pieces, and I was mentioning in the, in the room earlier, I'll mention it again now, many of the pieces of the service today are pre-recorded. I did that intentionally so that I would be always looking at the camera. I'm trying at the moment to look at the camera, which is up above me. So uh, hopefully I'm, I'm looking you in the eye, but I can't quite see that because you're on the screen over here to my left, so that's uh, that's how things are going to work today. But we're gonna we're gonna do our best, and we're gonna stay safe because it really is about safety. Let me put up our our question of the week. So that should be showing now. What have you learned from herding cats? Someone on. The Facebook page had the proper response that the way you heard cats is open a can of sardines. <laughs> There's a way of attracting people rather than pushing people. And that's what the church of bird watching is about. That's what my message is today. The fact that perhaps the institution and the organization and the forcing of, of herding of cats, which has been the model of the church for millennia now, is perhaps time to be let go. And perhaps in this age of spirit, we might follow where the spirit leads, the spirit which is defined by Celtic understanding and Celtic theology as the wild goose of God. And that image of following the wild goose on a wild goose chase is exactly right on about how God functions in our life so often. So rather than think of everything so orderly, maybe we follow along and go where spirit leads. And so if today is a bit choppy and a little different, that might be okay too. And so that's where we are today. And so seeking to walk in the way of Jesus, we are an open and affirming church, faithfully using who we are and what we have to serve those on the margins of our community. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be all right don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be alright Rise up this morning Smile with the rising sun Three little birds Pitch by my doorstep Singing sweet songs, melodies pure and true. This is my message to you. 
don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be alright Don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be alright Rise up this morning Smile with the rising sun Three little birds Pitch by my doorstep Singing sweet songs Of melodies pure and true this is my message to you Don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be alright Sing and don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be alright These are anxious times. Our spirits are weary. We are worried. We are weighed down. Spirit should lift us, provide a cure, and it does, if we are willing to follow the wild goose on the wing. The antidote to anxiety is curiosity. We can turn worry into wonder by replacing I worry about that with I wonder what will happen. Meditation needs to allow the natural clarity of the deepest mind, the mind with the broadest widest view, mind that is not separate from anything, to come to the fore. Meditation can be a tool to help us connect with the God's eye view of creation. We begin by listening to the reality around us so that we might find our place. Take a deep breath and slowly let it out. Feel where there is any tension being held in your body. Bring your attention to that spot. Take another breath. And as you let it out, picture the tension flowing out from that spot. Repeat that if you need to. Take time to settle into your body. Notice the space that you are inhabiting. Notice what is touching your body. Feel how your body inhabits the space that you are in. Now begin observing the immediate space around you. If you are able and comfortable, close your eyes to help become aware of the sounds 
that may not have been immediately obvious to you. Notice that as you listen, sounds emerge that you didn't notice at first. Where are the sounds coming from? How near or how far away are they from you? Are you drawn into audio on the computer or the sounds around you? Can you identify the sounds? What bird is making that call? Observe what happens in your mind as you analyze. As you move your awareness back from this space, reflect on these questions. Did this experience open you to seeing anything in a new way? Did you become aware of new elements in the reality of your context? Were you surprised by the abundance that is already present? Now, opening your eyes, return to an awareness of the space that you inhabit. Does it feel different? Are you more aware of your place in all that is. Imagine the experience of this spiritual journey, this wild goose chase, as a small token that you can place in your pocket 
so that you can always reach in and touch it when you need to release expectations to receive the calming gift of spirit. Was the sound okay for folks? I can't see. If you put in chat, if the if the sound was okay for that. Uh, excellent. Well, if Steve could unmute, you could lead us, and we can pray together the prayer of Saint Francis. Hello. Excellent. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, let, let us proceed then with the um, prayer of invocation. Um, I am on a phone link. Uh, I could not get onto Zoom. So hopefully you can hear me. I, can, I don't know that I can hear you. I certainly can't see you and you can't see me. But uh, this morning's prayer of invocation is the prayer of St. Francis, which we will read together. So please let us uh, unite our hearts in the spirit of prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may seek not so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it's in giving that we receive, and it's in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. There's also a delay that I'm aware of, so I have to pardon that, I'm afraid. But speaking of pardoning, we are coming to the table today, and everyone is invited, everyone. But we're going to talk about the fact that sometimes we have found ways to exclude people. And so before we come to the table, it is vital that we take a moment and examine ourselves and think about those ways that we've locked other people out, where we've said, you're not welcome at the table with me and my people. We don't associate with you and your people. And so we seek that forgiveness and we seek to be like Francis, bringing peace where there is none, bringing love where there was hatred, bringing pardon. And so let us take a moment and offer to God our personal private confessions. Friends, know the love and grace of our abundant, merciful God, who is eager to forgive you and welcome you to break bread at God's table. 
And because of this, we are people who know peace and can share that with one another. And so I invite you, uh, perhaps you're in gallery view now, if not going to gallery view so you can see one another and we can give each other literally a sign of peace. And the way I suggest we do this is you, you place your hands across your chest, near your heart, feeling the peace and you offer the peace of Christ to others and then you receive it back. And so my friends, the peace of Christ be with you. Also with you. Amen. The scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 13 through 21, the parable of the feeding of the thousands. When Jesus heard about the beheading of John, he left Nazareth by boat and went to a deserted place to be alone. The crowds heard of this and followed him from their towns on foot. 
When Jesus disembarked and saw the vast throng, his heart was moved with pity, and he healed their sick. As evening drew on, the disciples approached Jesus and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowd so they can go to their villages and buy some food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to disperse. Give them something to eat yourselves. But we have nothing here, they replied. Only five loaves and a couple of fish. Bring them here, Jesus said. And he ordered the crowds to sit on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, Jesus looked up to heaven and blessed the food and broke it and gave it to the disciples, who in turn gave it to the people. And all those present ate their fill. The fragments remaining when gathered up filled twelve baskets, and about five thousand families were fed. Ends the reading. The most boring place to be a birder is at a bird club meeting. It is where you talk about birding instead of birding. If, on the other hand, it is a place and a time to sharpen your skills, increase your knowledge, and prepare to watch birds, well then it just might be time well spent. If not, one has to wonder why. Some bird clubs become so convinced of their own importance and exclusivity that they require you to submit your birding qualifications and only gain admission through the vote of a committee. Meanwhile, amateur bird watchers are out in the field and looking at their backyard bird feeders reporting all sorts of nonsensical sightings that can't possibly be true. Until, of course, they are. Those birders who lock themselves up in their ivory towers, arguing over whether ivory bill woodpeckers are extinct or not, no doubt, miss out on the real reason they started birding in the first place. But there are other ways to be church. Oh, did I say church? I meant bird club. Or now that I think about it, the most boring place to be a Christian very often is at church. It is the place where we talk about following Christ instead of following Christ. Now, if it were a time to sharpen our skills, gain knowledge, and prepare to follow Christ, well, then it might be worth our time. If not, you have to wonder why. Some churches have become so convinced of their own importance and exclusivity that they require you to submit your theological qualifications to be voted upon by a committee. Meanwhile, unchurched Christians are out in the field and looking in their backyards and reporting all sorts of nonsensical sightings of Christ that can't possibly be true until they are. Those Christians who lock themselves up in their ivory towers arguing, no doubt, over the nature of the Trinity or predestination or how many angels can dance on the head of a pin, miss the very reason why they became Christians in the first place. And yes, there are other ways to be a bird club. You don't need the club to be a birder. On May 18th, 2018, with migration in full swing, I had to drive a couple of hours to a meeting. 
but I didn't let that deter me. When the meeting ended, I was able to use the tools at my disposal. I checked the internet to see if there were any sightings, any places around me to go look for some birds. And I discovered that a rare bird had been found not too far from where I was. There was a Western Kingbird at an airport in Columbus. And I decided I was going to chase it. And I knew that when I did, that I would have tools at my disposal, that others would help me. I had every confidence that I would not be alone and that I could find the bird because, simply because, others had found it first. And so I drove to the location and it wasn't clear how to get in or how to follow the roads around. And so I once again consulted the email that I had received. I saw that others had responded and the description of how to get to the precise spot were included. So I drove around to a different entrance and drove in following precisely as I was instructed. And as I turned the last bend to come to the location, I saw what I knew confirmed that I was in the right place. A line of birders, people with spotting scopes and binoculars looking in the same direction. And there's something about looking at that group of people that lets you know whether they're seeing the bird or not. If they're all chatting to each other and people looking in different directions, then you know that perhaps the bird is not being seen. But if they're intent and they're focused, then all you need to do is to step out of your car and you will be welcomed by the tribe who will recognize you as one of their own because there you are with your binoculars in this strange location looking to do what they're doing. And all you have to do is say, well, or is it there? Or better yet, do you have it? And invariably, someone will share. Oftentimes, what will happen is someone will have their spotting scope set up and they'll say, it's in my scope. Come here, have a look. And voila, you're on the bird. And that was my experience that day. I showed up and I asked, is it here? And they said, yeah, right there on that wire. I turned and looked and sure enough, there was the bird. And that wasn't the end of it. Yes, we were sticking around to enjoy this bird. And because it was a gathering of birders, we were birding. And because it was migration, there were birds. And we found other birds at that location that we took one another to see. And there was this sense of serving the common good. That the purpose of our showing up in this place was to see the bird and to help other people see the bird. And then when it neared time for me to leave to go home, one of my considerations was, am I the last person? Is there someone to hand the bird off to? For you see, that's what the bird club does. The club that is made up of those birders who are out chasing the birds. We organize around the task. We show up, don't need to know each other, but each of us does what we can to help everyone see the bird. We try to get people on the bird first, ask questions later, try to get a good look now, and then if you can get a photograph, but don't block someone else's way to see it. Do you see what I'm saying about how the church might be? We could indeed organize this very way, knowing that there are needs to be met in the world. That's no surprise. And we are called to respond. Well, what if the church, instead of creating an institution and creating methodologies and practices on how to do this or do that and have committees to discuss things, what if instead we simply popped up where there was a need, like the birders showing up at a rare bird? And what if we all used the tools at our disposal? What if we each used our gifts? What if those of us with better eyesight helped those who had a hard time seeing, or those with better ears could say, I hear it over there. What if each of us brought our gifts? Each of us brought our tools and our resources to the task and said, I have this, what do you have? What can we put together to meet this need? We don't need committees to do that. We don't need to have discussions and plans. We simply need to show up and see what we have and trust God to bring it together. Because it is like migration. It's going to keep moving and it will happen in ebbs and flows. And we need to just be 
ready. We need to show up. And you see, the term solitary birder is an oxymoron. None of us have all the skills at birth to do what we do. We inherit that not through genetics, but through knowledge. We receive the knowledge and the wisdom of those who've gone before. From Audubon to Wilson to Peterson to Sibley, those who've gone before have amassed knowledge and passed it on to us. They've created the texts of birding. They've made the field guides. They've painted the pictures. They've given the descriptions. And clubs have organized and taught people how to find birds and where to go and how to identify them. And people have passed that knowledge on from one to another. None of us do this alone. And the church should be like that as well. For we need to understand that we have received gifts, not for ourselves, but for others. And for others to receive, we need to pass on those gifts and teach others how to do what we know how to do. We need to teach others the skills that we have been taught. We need to work together to build up, always building up, because we have a singular goal, to find the rare bird. And that rare bird is the wild goose of God's spirit. And like any wild goose, there's a chase involved. And so if we are committed as Christians, we will want to find the rare bird. We will want to chase the wild goose. And so, my friends, if you believe, as you well should, that the Holy Spirit of our God wants you to go on this wild goose chase, then you should also believe that you are not a solitary bird watcher. No, you go along with others. And each of us participates together in one particular goal, and that is to see the rare bird, but to make sure that all see this rare bird, this wild goose spirit of our God. And it is right before you, right before me. It's right there, and we can all help each other to see it, as long as we have the eyes or the binoculars to see it. Amen. Friends, we respond to the gifts of God by offering our gifts. And so please take the time to offer your financial gifts to the church using the website or using the postal service, whatever ways you can to do that. Take the time now also to offer in the chat your prayer requests, for we will come to that next as well. Let us offer to God that which already belongs to God, but is in our care. May we be good stewards as we make our offering.
oh God, we offer to you our gifts. Nothing more than what you've already given. But we do seek a blessing upon the gifts and upon the givers that we might serve you even as we follow and search for you. Being blessed by you because we bless one another. Amen. I believe I'm noticing some lag, unfortunately. So I don't know if we're all together here. But I am going to see if we can't do our share our joys and concerns. Can you raise the volume up some? Um, just now, this one or? Uh, yes. Um, I don't know. Let me see. Uh, there are multiple places for me to do that. <laughs> I don't know if that would help. I think it might be the, the microphone I'm using if I, uh, whoops. That's not what I want to do. What if I For us, we hear it, but it's if, faint. And if where I go it's back turned to this, is, loud as we can go. If I, uh, if I switch to this, is the sound better? No, nope, both the same. Oh, okay. Not, I'm sorry, I'm not sure then which setting needs to be changed. <laughs> I'll work on that. Okay. Um, but are there, uh, I, I did see joys and concerns in the chat. Does anyone uh, want to unmute themselves to share uh, a particular joy or concern? I invite you to do that now. Can we, go ahead. Continuing prayers for the hungry and the homeless. This, this week, we heard um, from our niece who visited two weeks ago that her dear friend committed suicide two days after their vacation together. And then, so I heard that on Wednesday. And then yesterday, my brother texted me that his close friend committed suicide on Thursday. So my brother and his family are just reeling and all of the friends who knew these two people and it's it's just it's you know and the school shooting that happened this week our close friends children go to that school and they're having a really hard time it just seems like mental health crisis things are just getting worse i'm sure because of all the stresses of of covid and just all the things going on in our country right now so just Prayers for our country and for those suffering from mental illness. Thank you. Prayers, prayers for our friend Julia who's recovering from cataract surgery. Prayers for my two sisters, Linda and Betty, as they deal with health issues. And also prayers for Gary's family. Gary was a patient at dialysis who passed away yesterday. Also in the chat are prayers for the women in Texas seeking health care. Prayers for those suffering from the floods. Prayers for the Afghan people seeking freedom and safety. Well, friends, let us 
take a short moment of silence to settle into hearing these concerns in our hearts and offering them to God. And let us listen for how it is that God calls us to respond, for truly we are God's hands and feet and eyes and ears in the world. Let us pray. Oh God, use us, your people. Use us to go to the places that you need us to go. Hearing our own voices speaking our concerns, may they compel us to respond in the ways that we can and offering to you our concerns when they're beyond our ability, trusting that you have other followers other people you've blessed with the gifts to respond. Bless us all with broken hearts, that we would feel your compassion for all your people. A compassion that you felt so strongly that you became one of us, taking on flesh, suffering in the body, and suffering in spirit and soul as we, your people, rejected you. And yet you forgive and you love still. And you bind us together with words offered when you walked among us, that we pray together with your people in all times and all places, words we pray together now as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of this week's 
devotionals from the United Church of Christ was written by Reverend Piwa Lanjami. And they wrote about being a child and having time on the playground during school, during recess to play. And a terrible thing that used to happen to them all too regularly in that precious moment, that little bit of time that one has for recess, you try to join in with other kids playing on the playground. And if they didn't want you to play, the words were TikTok game locked. And Piwa spoke of being locked out of game after game after game and not being able to share in that precious recreation. Communion is a form of recreation. It's recreation. And it's a gift that should be available to all of us, but as we know, it tends not to be. For too long, the church has TikTok locked the game. We have said who can come and who can't. But Jesus welcomed all to the table. And the early church, I think, understood that because the celebration was an adaptation of the ritual remembering the liberation of the people from captivity in Egypt. And it was a formalized ritual, granted some changes over time, but a ritual. And the people who celebrated were the people of that lineage, the Hebrew people, Jewish folks celebrated it. So it was a locked game. But Jesus, Unlock that for everybody. And he said, as often as you do this, remember me. And the early church, I think, understood that that meant when you sit down at the table, when you break bread, when you drink the cup. So it doesn't matter when or where or who. What matters is you understand that it's Christ's table. And then Jesus went and left us and is present now only through spirit. So isn't it interesting that we use spirits in our communion? Although, again, how often has the church taken the spirit out and used grape juice instead of wine? But we are living in the age of spirit. We are the people of the spirit. We know Christ's presence, not in his body, but in his spirit, how he lives among us. And so as we come to the table, perhaps we should once again take that outlaw stance. Because you see, those early Christians could have been arrested, jailed, even killed for celebrating their rituals, for identifying as Christian. We've lost that feeling, especially when we celebrate our rituals in very practiced ways. And so for a number of years now, I've picked up on the gift of a wild man, holy fool friend of mine, Phil Wyman, who started a tradition, a ritual, open to change, called Midnight Moonshine Mass. It's a gathering whenever we choose to gather as outlaws, as rebels, as people willing to identify with the spirit of our God and have some spirits, usually in the woods down by the river, annually at the Wild Goose Festival, where we understand that God's spirit is a wild goose leading us into places where we don't choose to go. And so as we come to the table, a virtual table, no table at all, a desk, your lap, an end table, whatever beverage you have, however strong or mild, know that the spirit of God is there. And this is a practice that is unlocked for all, for you. So come and partake. 
grab what it is that is before you. Know that it is blessed. Know that spirit is present. And most of all, know TikTok game unlocked. Let us feast. Friends, whatever gifts you have, whether you have bread or not, as long as you have the spirit of your God, and you do, you have the gifts of God. So friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us partake of the feast. And so we give glory to our God who has refreshed us at the table, given from the bounty that only God can give. We rejoice to have found our place in creation. And so we go into our lives, the living of our days, giving glory to our God. May we give glory to this creator God, the one who knows even the sparrow that falls. May God lift you on gentle breezes that you might soar with eagles and bless you with the gift of vision and wisdom and give glory to the christ who will always come to you in forms of the least and the last and the lost and challenge you and bless you with tears that you might shed them with those who suffer and give glory to god's Holy Spirit, who is indeed the wild goose, who leads us into all those places where we wouldn't go if we weren't on the chase looking for our God. And may this holy wild goose bless you with a gift of foolishness to stay on the chase, to keep looking, to keep finding, to keep sharing. And may the love of God be with you all and all those whom you love, and all those whom none but God loves, now and until that day of God's judgment, when justice will roll down like waters, and peace will blossom among all the peoples. Amen. <laughs>